Hi, I'm Carol Whittington, and I would like to invite you to stop by Personal Touch Party Rentals and Events, located at 1540 Hubbard Drive in Lancaster. We are a small family-owned business and have been servicing the Central Ohio and Hawking Hills area since 2003. Graduations with a personal touch, weddings with a personal touch, corporate events with a personal touch. Please call us today for all your party rental needs, 740-689-6991. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Ohio University Lancaster, R.N. Smith Heating and Cooling, Standing Stone Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield National Bank, The Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, North Body Shop, The Lancaster Eagle Gazette, Ohio Christian University, Kumler Collision, Lines Auto Service, The Carriage Company, Wall to Wall Floors, The Window Man, Kurt Bride Lawn Care, and Infinitely Outdoors. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to the High School Basketball Game of the Week. I'm Jared Stewart alongside Tim Shoemaker. Tonight, we're at Fairfield Union High School for a huge battle in the Mid-State League Buckeye Division as the Falcons will host the Bulldogs of Bloom Carroll, two teams who met just less than 10 days ago, Shoe. Yeah, last Thursday, so uh, you got an eight-day eight break between games, kind of like an NBA schedule, Jared. And not only that, but uh, they just made an announcement that Fairfield Union is going to make up a game tomorrow mm -hmm. night that was snowed out. That's going to be a tough one. That's against Circleville, who's played pretty well in the Mid-State League, Buckeye. And that matter of fact, that's the only league loss that Carroll has. Yeah, and Carroll hosts Logan Elm tomorrow, which is nothing easy. And they still got to play Taze Valley next Tuesday. Yeah. So tonight's game will be a big determiner in who may be the Mid-State League uh, Buckeye Division champion but there's still work to be done after tonight. Where this was supposed to be the final game of the season, but with our weather changes, yeah. it's thrown a little curveball into the mix. This is our Personal Touch Party Rental pregame show. Glad to have you along with this on this high school basketball game of the week. Big crowd on hand. They've already seen two tremendous games, Shoe. The uh, freshman game won by Fairfield Union 32-25, and then the JV game just a moment ago won by Bloom Carroll 39-32. We're in for a treat tonight. Well, if you look at, you know, last week's game, and, and games are totally different from one week to the other, especially when you're you're dealing with young young players like we are here. But if you look at last week's game, 49-46, came down to some crucial possessions late in the game. And Bloom Carroll, you know, after talking to Coach Eversole and Coach Petty, yeah. Bloom Carroll felt like they just executed in the crunch time, which you would expect from a veteran, well-coached team. Talking about these two coaches, uh, they know each other pretty well. <laughs> we, we've got a fun scenario. You know, you got Coach Petty's in his 36th season, over 600 wins, one of the top coaches in the state of Ohio and the history of the state of Ohio, right. which is a, a great tribute to him. But Alex Eversole's in his second year, and Coach Petty was his coach. That's and right. does that throw a little interesting twist and turn into it tonight? And, you know, Alex has this thing going. You know, last year, nine wins, got better learned a lot of things this year 16 and 4 coming in and a possible chance of being a mid-state league buckeye champion and, and it's it's never never not a big thing to be right. a league champion and of course uh, league championships are, are nothing new to bloom carroll and of course coach eversall was a part of some of those uh when he played at bloom carroll yes yes he was and actually the, he, won, he played on two district championship teams you know coach petty's won 14 of these and in, in his 36 year career that's uh, not too shabby. Not at all. <laughs> As we get ready for the uh, national anthem, shoe uh, just real quickly, atmosphere here is is what high school basketball is all about. It can't. It, 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 there's no place it could be better tonight. This is great fun. You've got senior night for the Falcons. You got you know a, a top team visiting. Uh, your team's playing great. You're getting ready for the tournaments in a week. Snow's flying. Popcorns cooking. Cheerleaders jumping. Just doesn't get any better. <laughs> And, but we're glad we're inside watching this, right, instead of outside in the snowflakes? I tell you what, I love it. We're in the front row, Jerry. That's right. 
Well, Shu, uh, not, not too often we get a chance to uh, hear the national anthem, but tonight we're going to get a chance to hear that, and you're going to get a chance to hear it at home as well, as uh, the Fairfield Union, I think this is their men's ensemble, about to uh, sing the national anthem. So we will pause for that, and we'll be back uh, momentarily. And a fine job by the Fairfield Union men's ensemble singing tonight's national anthem. And Shu, let's get right back into talking about uh, this game and looking at that game just a little over a week ago. You mentioned it briefly. Bloom Carroll won 49-46. Just a battle out there in Carroll going back and forth. What really was the key to victory for Coach Petty and his crew in that game? Well, and I think when you look at, if you look at numbers, and numbers don't always tell the story, but Bloom Carroll shot 50% from the field. Um, and, and you look at Fairfield Union shot 36%. When I was able to speak to, to Coach Eversole and Coach Petty, it's very interesting. The first thing I said, well, what do you think the keys are to the game? Both coaches, first thing out of their mouth without hesitation was, well, on the defensive side, right. and that's why they're good. Defense goes everywhere all the time. Offense will vary. Some nights you're on, some nights you're on. But defense can always be on. And these two teams are very, very good defensive teams. And Shu, you know, I think one of the, the, the coolest things that, that has happened in the Mid-State League is that we now have a, another ri a, a, a rivalry, rivalry that's renewed, basically, between Carroll and Fairfield Union. Yeah, and, and you know, for the most part, the rivalry in the Buckeye division had been with Logan Elm, sure. Ortiz Valley. Those teams have been strong and try to knock Carroll off their perch. Well, it's kind of nice to have the Falcons back tonight because now we have two teams right yeah. here just across county that are going to knock heads. Yeah, and that's one thing that Coach Petty said when you talked to him. He said, it's a revived rivalry. Yeah. Expect a battle. And I, and I like it. I mean, I, he, and he, he, you know what? He, he takes that and embraces it, and that's what I like because he knows it's going to be charged here. And if you're going to play in big games, and play well in them, you have to have some experience playing in them. And this, they're going to get that opportunity tonight. Tonight's tip-off is brought to you by the Sheridan Funeral Home. The Sheridan family and staff have been serving the communities of Lancaster and Fairfield County for over 100 years. Contact Sheridan Funeral Home at 740-653-4633 to set up an appointment with a caring professional. Glad to have you along with us in this Mid-State League Buckeye Division battle between the top two teams in the league, the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs wearing their purple tonight and the Fairfield Union Falcons in the white. And we are underway, and the Bulldogs will control the basketball to start. Right side, it's Gavin Brown. And immediately a whistle and a foul underneath the bucket. Yeah, Hayden Price put his hands on the defender or the offensive player when he went to catch. If he shows his hands, he can make contact, but you gotta show the official your hands. Get him off of him, bump him with your body. First foul for Hayden Price. Inbound comes into Justin Harvey. Swing it to Brown. Looking inside. They'll get it now to Griffin Dozer. Here's Grant Dozer, who had a big game in that first matchup, and he puts it up and in. I tell you, that's a great job by Colin Woodside sprinting the floor 
and the guard's looking up the floor, Jared. If you run hard as a post player and you run from basket to basket, you can get a lot of things positive happening for your team. Colin Woodside is a six foot five sophomore and gets up and down the floor well for a six foot five well, kid. Well, that time he did, he sprinted the floor, which is, is what you would want out of your post player. I know Coach Petty, he's a little frustrated with his defender that he didn't run as hard. But I'm telling you, if you run hard, you can beat people down the floor because most people don't run as hard as they can. Woodside second free throw up, no good. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. Two to one early on here from Fairfield Union. Griffin Dozer with the basketball being worked on by Thomas Green. Get it back now to Justin Harvey. Here's Grant Dozer. Back out now to Matt Smith. Both teams with a Matt Smith. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on Lucas Thompson and the Falcons. Well, what you got to like from the Bloom Carroll side is how, how poised and how much, you know, they just showed their ability to swing the ball from side to side, Jared, and attack the basket. One of the things Coach Petty told me is that he felt that they didn't attack the rim well until they got into the second half of that game. And what have we seen so far here? They're attacking the basket. I just uh, took a peek over at <laughs> Coach Petty on that missed free throw, and that's one thing that he does not like very well at all. He, no coach likes no. those are free points with the clock stopped. Well, and they didn't shoot him well the first game. Yeah. You know, they did not shoot him well the first time, and still won. So yeah. that you know, that's a good compliment to the other parts of their game. He made one of two. Griffin Dozer did. That makes it three-one. Bulldogs left side. There's Matthew Smith inside, wide open for a moment. Was Hayden Price. Puts a shot up, no good. Rebounded by Matt Smith. Yeah, pass was just a bit late, Jared. Throws the timing off. Back out to Dozer. Here's Smith, the six foot seven post player for the Bulldogs. And a whistle, and he was on the line. See how patient they are, though? They swung the ball from side to side, and as Coach Petty you know, alluded to, they want to attack the bat. They're putting the ball on the floor trying to get to the rim. And it's always good for me to watch teams play, and a coach has a game plan, and the kids are trying to, right. to do it. And, th and th that's great when you see that. Brad Miller checks back into the, or checks into the ball game for the Falcons. They trail at 3-1. There's Woodside. Got him iso there. And had it tipped out of his hands and right into the hands of Justin Harvey. Can you kind of sense, Jared, that they're, both teams are just a little tight right yes, now? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, it just doesn't seem quite as smooth. Grant Dozer except drains for, a three. Except for Grant Dozer. That's his fifth point. Yeah, he's, uh, he's ready to play. Five of his team's six points, and it's 6-1. Here's Woodside. Skip pass over to Smith, and he drains a three from the corner. That's a really nice pass. Coming from the post because what I liked about it is Woodside hit him in the shooting pocket with the hands. He didn't have to reach down. He didn't have to reach across his body, Jared. He hit him in the hands where he could just go up and yeah. shoot it. That's underrated a lot of times in passing. Five and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. 6-4 Bulldogs. Here's Dozer, Griffin Dozer. Back out to Grant Dozer. Dozer, quick dribble. He'll kick it back out to the big guy for three. Smith's three, no good. The backside rebound to put up and in for Gavin Brown. Yeah, just didn't get him checked out. Just didn't get him blocked out. See what I mean when you're catching in your bobble and set? You're a little uptight, yeah. you know, just take your time. Woodside tries to get one inside, but Smith tips it out. Subs coming in for both teams. 8-4, Bloom Carroll, 4.56 to play in the first quarter. Three-point attempt put up for Lucas Thompson. No good. Rebounded by Smith. Gavin Brown, quick drive to the baseline. Had his blo shot blocked by Brad Miller. Brown really didn't leave his feet on that shot, it doesn't look like. No, he did not. In the corner, Hayden Price. Get it inside to Woodside. Woodside up strong, and he's fouled. Well, that's, a, that's a nice job of being patient and getting the post fed. One of the things that... 
I know Coach Petty was concerned about is defending Woodside. He not felt, did not feel the first game eight days ago. They did a very good job on him. He had 21 points, but he also paid him a compliment. He said he's got good feet yeah. and he's got good moves in there. And as you can see, he does have a decent stroke at the foul line also. Matt Smith is going to have to check out. He has two fouls. And coming in to replace him will be Micah. No, check that. That's 42. Caleb Downs, six foot six junior. Second free throw for Woodside. No good. He's two of four there tonight. He's made the front end of both of them and missed it's, the back end. Yeah, his shot looks good, though. It just comes with some focus. 8-5, yeah. Falcons trail. Lasky got it off to Downs, and he traveled. Yeah, he did. That's a good call. The Falcons with a chance to cut into it. They trail by three. Hayden Price looking for Woodside. Woodside had Caleb Downs draped all over him. Nice move and shot put up and in for Lucas Thompson. Yeah, I tell you, Carroll's backside was chasing people, and there's no help. You yeah. put the ball on the floor, you, you know, you say, well, you can't get beat. Well, you're going to get beat once in a while with the dribble. Your help's got to be there. Dozer. To the elbow, lost it. Stolen away by the Falcons. Here they come, Hayden Price. Up ahead to Brad Miller. That's Quick nice, ball movement around nice. to Matthew Smith for three, no good. That's still excellent movement. Gavin Brown looks over for a play. Brown being worked on closely by Brad Miller. They'll get it to Caleb Downs. Now they'll swing it back around to Dozer. Three-point attempt put up. No good. Rebound just kind of fell into the hands of Caleb Downs. Here's a long three-pointer. No good. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on Downs. Really nice job by Woodside blocking out there. He stayed with him, kept his body on him, and kept his hands off of him. Justin Harvey oh, set the check back in for the Bulldogs. And coming in for the Falcons is Thomas Green. Eight to seven, three minutes to play in the first quarter. Price brings it up, guarded by Griffin Dozer. Here's Green in the corner. Skips it back over to Price. Now back to Green. Price with a quick step, trying to go baseline, and Griffin Dozer found him. Yeah, Griffin used his bar, bar arm, but you can't extend it. You know, what people don't understand is the oh, foul, whether it's called or not, is so much based on technique. Yeah. You can put the arm there, Jared. We used to tell him to attach your thumb to your jersey, and you can guide. But once you extend it, what, what's the official do? It calls a foul. And Woodside is called for a double dribble. I, 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 I guess I'm watching, but I didn't really see it. So we stay at 8-7. Clock down under two and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. Downs being guarded by Woodside. Gets it off to Dozer. Harvey now drives baseline. Nice ball fake. But he traveled. Good help, too. Colin Woodside's doing a really nice job on some detailed things. We've got a whistle and a technical foul. Wow. On the assistant coach. On the assistant coach. And the assistant coach is saying that he was talking to his player. So now Coach Petty's going to try to get a, an explanation. Yeah, assistant coaches aren't really even supposed to be up, Jared. You're, generally, they'll let you unless you're talking. And obviously, he he, he talked the wrong word <laughs> yeah, or phrase, whatever. Yeah. Well, that means Coach Petty can't get up now at this yeah. point the rest of the game. So, Free throw for Thomas Green is up and in, ties it up at eight. Second one for Green, also good. 
I know Coach Petty doesn't get up a whole lot, but when he needs no. to, he does. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and you know, that's that, that point of when I speak, I want him heard. Right. Unfortunately, he can't get up now because that technical goes to the bench and, yep. and that, that restricts the head coach. And we are still in the first quarter, two minutes and 10 seconds to play. Here's Woodside. And now to Green. Well, if you watch really good teams, Jared, See, that, 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 strong that, to the hoop. see, that's what Coach Petty talked about or alluded to. He's got good balance. I'd like to see him even take the ball and get a little lower because he has the physical strength. But that's a dominating move right there, yeah. Jared. Colin Woodside, just a sophomore, six foot five. And the Falcons lead it 11-8. Nice move. And a whistle and a charge going to be called on Gavin Brown. See, I, I, I wish the high school would go to the circle because I, I really think, I think that's the right call there. But I also think, as you see it here, wow. I also think it's too late. Oh yeah, he stepped over awful late. But, but see, I think if you have that circle, that little, uh, that little half circle, that would alleviate yes. some of that, Jared. Replays are brought to you by Kumu Collision. We'll tell you about them in a moment. Nice pass inside. Price couldn't finish. Good hustle by Woodside. Here's Price in the corner. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on Caleb Downs. That'll be his second. Officials definitely calling close tonight. That's, that's two fouls apiece on Carroll's two big guys. Well, that, you know... Fairfield Union is going to attack the post, and why not? But what I like is they're not just locking Colin on the block down there and not moving him. He's starting, he's starting from outside, Jared, and then getting inside and getting position. And he's only going to get better with his body, but he's already doing a nice job. First free throw, no good for Colin Woodside. Rebounded by the Bulldogs. I love to watch Coach Petty coach. He takes notes over there the entire game. And of course, we know what that means at halftime. He's got a lot of things to tell his players. Well, I, you know, when you when you coach as long as Coach Betty has and has the success, to make an adjustment usually is not changing something wholeheartedly. It's usually tweaking, whether it be, and you look at the effort here yeah. and, and for the loose ball, but you're just going to adjust maybe how you execute in your motion offense, which they run a play here a play there, or just defensively, how you want to defend in the post, double team, not double team. Whistle and a foul going to be called on Matthew Smith. Yeah. That'll be his first. We're going to be shooting a lot of free throws tonight yeah, right are. now at this point. But you know what? The players must adjust. You can complain all you want, but if that's how the game's going to be officiated, then you have to adjust to how the officials are calling it. Jack Wolshire checks in for the Falcons. Lob pass comes in to Dozer. They'll get it to the corner to Downs. Down under a minute to play in the first quarter. 11-8 Falcons. Dozer. Back to Brown for three. No good. Thomas Green the rebound. Green will give it over to Wolshire. Now the 25 seconds. Let's see if the Falcons will play for one shot. Well, they're certainly trying to do that. Little high stack and pop out. That's, that's a little early to start. You don't want to go till eight if you play it the way, you know, that you want to run it down the clock. But they've started early here. Eight seconds now, down to six. Now you got to go. Thomas Green fires a long range three. Still two seconds on the clock. And time will run out here in the first quarter with the Falcons up 11 to eight. I tell you what, Shu, a little sloppy at the beginning, but uh, you know both teams picked it up there toward the end of the first quarter. Yeah, I just think they were just uptight. Plus, you know, you've got a scenario here where the teams know each other so well. They know the personnel, yeah. they know the styles. I mean, like we mentioned earlier, my goodness, Coach Eversole played for Coach Petty, so he he he's going to have an idea. And you can see Coach Petty getting their attention right now. And that's not screaming at players. He's just making a point. There's sure. a big difference. Right. You know, he's not trying to embarrass anybody. He's trying to get them motivated. Really what they're having trouble uh, offensively is they're settling. They're settling for a shot just because, oh, I've made this before. When you need to screen better, you need to cut harder, and then you need to put the ball on the floor and get to the basket. Yeah. But on the other hand, give the Fairfield Union group 
really, really props defensively. I thought they did a nice job defending the perimeter, but on, on top of that, Jared, is their help side was early. And right. It was there early to stop penetration. Tonight's scoreboard sponsor is Buffalo Wild Wings. Thanks to Larry Tipton and the gang for great food, great service, and the best sport, sports viewing in town. It's all at Buffalo Wild Wings in the Plaza Shopping Center on North Memorial Drive. Look at that crowd, Shu. Had a shot, look at that. I'm just glad we had a reserve seat. And that's just a partial look at the student section. They go almost from floor to the top. Bremen to Rushville, right? <laughs> it's true. 11-8 as we begin the second quarter with the Falcons leading the Bulldogs in a rematch for first place in the Mid-State League Buckeye, right now held by Bloom Carroll. Lob inside to the big man. Colin Woodside, Woodside up strong and puts it up and in. Good job on the crab dribble, but like I said, he, he'll get even better when he gets wider and slower. I mean, that's a tough shot. He did a nice job with the jump hook. Out front, here's Dozer. Swing it right side to Lasky. Lasky looking at Lucas Thompson. See you know what I mean? There's not enough movement out of the Carroll offense. And if you're going to rely on that, it's going to be a tough night. Nice rebound and put back up and in for Griffin Dozer. Oh, that's a big lift. That's a big lift for Carroll. They needed a hoop there, and Griffin stepped in and did a nice job. They were on a scoring drought for a while. Inside to Woodside. His shot's no good, but he's going to be going to the free throw line to shoot two. They call it on Caleb Downs, his third foul. Woodside, free throw no good. I tell you, for somebody whose shot looks pretty good, <laughs> he's, he's not getting him right in the hole. Yeah, he is. Two for five from the line right now. Let's see what he does with this one. He does have six points in the game. Second free throw, also no good. So the score remains 13-10. Brown gives it off left side to Griffin Dozer. Now to Lasky. Dozer, three point in and out, rebounded by Woodside. And he has it stolen away from behind. Tipped out of there by Gra Gavin Brown. Into the hands of Dozer, here comes Dozer. Slipped and fell, got it away quickly. Three point attempt for Smith is in. Wow, that's a big change in play right there. But, you know, from Colin Woodside, you must always realize when you're in the middle of the floor, pressure from behind. It's where, they, it's where people get steals. The Falcons outran him up the floor, couldn't finish. And Woodside the rebound. Here comes a set play. Bloom Carroll. Can't get it entered. They're ever playing yeah. the wing. Thomas Green takes a screen from Woodside. He'll fire up a long range three. You can see that one was short from a long way. And now we've got a whistle and a foul on the offensive end. Here you see the three point replay. I tell you, when your big guy can step out and make that oh, shot, you know, he got a generous roll. The rim was kind, but still, the fact that he shot it and he shot it with confidence, that's a big lift to the Carroll offense. Woodside was called for the foul. That's his first. They remain tied at 13. Just under six minutes to play here in this first half. Griffin Dozer gets it down to Lasky in the corner. There's a pick to picker. Gavin Brown's three-pointer no good. Yeah, he's just not on right uh -uh. now, Jared. He He's just not getting it. On the other end, three-pointer wow. put up no good for Lucas Thompson. Got bodies flying everywhere over there as the into the bench got taken out. <laughs> oh my. I think Barney caught the trainer in the front row. Hey, Barney lost his head. <laughs> Here's the replay, watch. Whoa. Oh my. A student body over there is having a little fun with yeah, it. Yeah, they are. Student body. <laughs> 
Right side is Lasky. Smith in the corner. Just hit a three a little while ago to tie it up for the Bulldogs. Quick ball movement around left side of Justin Harvey. Now back out Dozer for three. Off the iron, no good. Rebounded by Lucas Thompson. The Falcons done a great job on the defensive boards, limiting them to one shot. Here's Green. He thought about it, Jared. You he can was see it in his eyes. There. Yeah, but you can see it. Here's the post ISO. Now, is Carroll going to trap when he dribbles? Foul's going to be called on Matt Smith. That's going to be three on him. Both of their big guys now with three fouls. And here comes his third person to cover him. I tell you, it's hard because they're not as physically strong as Colin. Colin yeah. is stronger than they are. So if they're going to put their hands on and try to push back, you're going to look like you're fouling. And, and Jared, we talked about this in the JV game. Most fouls are called because they look like fouls right. to high school officials. Woodside ends a drought from the free throw line as he puts that one in. If he gets enough practice, he'll make them. Right now, he's had some practice. It's a seventh point, three of those from the free throw line as another sub comes in for Bloom Carroll. That's Gavin Brown. Also in there is Cole Williams. He replaces Matt Smith. Coach Petty with only nine players on the uh, varsity roster. He might have to use them all tonight as Woodside makes two of two this time. Now he's making it difficult on him defensively. What to do? I, you know, I'm surprised he hasn't run and trapped him when he put the ball on the floor yet. But I, that that adjustment may come. Left side. Here's Harvey. 15-13 is the score as the Falcons lead it. Tight defense put on by Lucas Thompson. Dozer drives baseline. And puts it up and in. Nice move, nice shot. You saw it in your living room from Tom Russo's camera right underneath the basket. Well, I hate to say this, Jared, but in that possession, I'd be calling him bulldozer because he worked <laughs> his way right in there and finished it off. Foul was caught on Brad Miller. Watch here. He just keeps persistent, keeps driving until the defender rests. But, you know, he's extending his arm a little bit, but he didn't push him off. He just cleared in space. And then the defender must go straight up. You must yeah. throw your hands. Throw your thumbs back behind your head because it's it's the verticality rule on the foul. Free throws up and in for Grant Dozer. That gives the lead back to Bloom Carroll, 16-15. Price having trouble with the basketball and regains it. Uh, just want to be a little more assertive with the basketball there, a little more aggressive. Thompson on the drive, and he's fouled. Foul's called on number 10, that's Justin Harvey. His first at the free throw line for the Falcons is Lucas Thompson. It's hard to win if you foul a lot, Jared. A foul's a mistake in basketball 90-some percent of the time. And eventually it'll catch up with you, as you can see here. Without making baskets, they're scoring points. And uh, it's a real negative. So I, I'm sure Coach Petty's frustrated with the amount of fouls they've had this half. Well, eight of their 17 points have come from the free throw line as yeah. Thompson puts a second one in. Yeah, almost 50% points from the line, and that, that'll get you beat on nights when, when, you, when you need to play well. The foul line's a neutralizer. 17-16 is a score. Brown gives it off to Lasky left side. Lasky on the drive, whoa! Lots of contact. They're gonna call a blocking foul on Matthew Smith. We'll see it again here, yeah. but the toughest call in basketball. It is. Charge block. And, and, and I mean, there's not a lot to say, but I, you know what? That foul, to me, it looks like it's initiated by the offensive player with the dip of the shoulder. Yeah. But I mean, again, at full speed, that's my first impression, but that's why I'm over here and they're right. out there. Tough Last calls, speed. Jared. Lasky with the basketball, same thing. Looked like it was going to have the same uh, play as the last one. Puts it up off glass, no good. Rebound fought for, Woodside. And a travel going to be called on Jared Lasky. Can't fall down when you have possession of it. I mean, that's proper call. Yeah. 
17-16, Falcons with the lead and the basketball. Here's Brad Miller, gives it off to Thompson. His three no good, Miller the rebound, his putback no good. Woodside now puts it up, no good, but he's fouled. Really hurting him on the boards. And you know what? The first game, Jared, Fairfield Union had 35 oh, rebounds, oh, kills 22, and it was, a, it was a point of emphasis for the Bulldogs to get better this game. But right now, the Falcons are doing the things on the boards at both ends, getting to the foul line, starting to make the free throws. He has more points from the free throw line than he does the field. That's five from the free throw line to give him nine total in the game. Make it 10 total in the game. I told you, if he got enough practice, he'd start making them. It looks good. His shot looks good. There's nothing wrong. It's just about concentration and confidence. 19-16 is the score. Three minutes to play in the first half. Three-point attempt from the corner is in for Jared Lasky. That's a really nice pit, penetrating pitch. You knew who made that play. Was, you know, the shooter made the shot. But Griffin Dozer made the play. Here's a lob. I thought wow. it was going to be a lob pass. That was a shot from way outside. I mean, that's, that's, that was 28 feet, Jared. Wow. He was looking for a four-pointer. I honestly thought he was lobbing it into Woodside, but that was a shot. Tied up at 19, 223 and counting here in the first half. Griffin Dozer, the basketball, gives it off to Lasky. He just hit the three mo moments ago, misses this one. Thomas Green the rebound. This is where you, if you can get an easy one, you get an easy one, you push. Lots of contact inside with Woodside and Cole Williams. Good job being patient here by the Falcons. Swing the basketball and then look inside again. You can get it. He's being held. Yeah, it's going to be called. I mean, that's just obvious. Here's the BC. Look at the pitch here by, by Griffin. Jump up and stick it. Yeah, that's nice basketball, and that's that's what Carroll likes to do. You know, give Fairfield Union some credit. They've taken a lot of that away. Let's see, 11th foul in the ball game for Bloom Carroll. Yeah, that that I mean, Jared, we could see it from here. There's just no way you can grab a hold of the arm and lean on him. Woodside free throw is up and good. He'll have another. See who we see in the that's stands. On, yeah, on the Carroll side, Number he doesn't one miss fan, it, isn't he? He is the number one fan. <laughs> is this, I think he even painted his hair tonight. Is this hair purple? As Woodside puts a second free throw in. 21-19 the score, under two minutes to play in the first half. Griffin Dozer, the basketball. Gets it out front to Harvey. Now Grant Dozer. Here's Lasky going on the drive, put it off the glass and in. Hey, what? Well, Lasky's giving him a big, big pickup here. He's he putting the ball has. on the floor and he's going hard, straight line to the basket. They're tied up at 21. Woodside back to Thompson. Thompson will fire up a long range three, no good. Woodside fighting for the rebound, he's got it. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on Gavin Brown. Guess who's going to the line again? <laughs> No, he caught him out of bounds. Oh, he did? OK. I thought he caught a foul. So did I. But he said the Carroll player was out of bounds. OK. okay. Good hustle by Colin White. Good side. He's doing an unbelievable job, Jared. Thomas Green for three, and he got it. Three. 24-21, under a minute to play in the first half. Here's Dozer. Get it off to Harvey. Back to Griffin Dozer. Now Grant Dozer. Griffin will fire up a three. No good. And we've got a whistle and a foul on Fairfield Union. Hey, it's one and one for the Bulldogs, too. Big foul right there. Called it on Brad Miller. That'll be his second. That'll send Gavin Brown to the free throw line.
As some subs come into the ball game as Gavin Brown gets ready for this free throw. Jack Wolshire checks in for the Falcons. Free throw up and good for Gavin Brown. Hey, Gavin's number one free throw shooter in the Central District. 86.3%. Wow. He's now 64 for 74, Jared. It's pretty good. Yes, it is. He's number one all divisions. Second one's up and also good. That's why you don't want to foul him. You're right. Falcons lead it by one, 24-23, down to 35 seconds to play in the first half. Hayden's got to make more thrust to the hoop here. Price back to Wolshire. They're going to try and hold it. You know, give them credit. They did a good job at the end of the first quarter. These are critical possessions in these low possession type games that make a difference. Thomas Green with the basketball down to 12 he's, seconds. He's Green going, takes he, a screen. Yeah. Yep. Down to eight seconds. Has it tipped. Price's shot is blocked with three seconds. Lasky, long range, shot no good at the buzzer, and the Falcons will take a 24 to 23 lead into the, into the locker room shoe. Well, I thought it was a little, good little burst by Carroll here at the end of the quarter. You know, this is, this is one of those games that, you know, the fans don't really get so hyped up because the defenses are so good that it makes the offenses patient. You know, most people think, well, it's low scoring because the coach is uh, offensively limited and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. It's low scoring because defensively, they won't let them have easy shots. And, and offensively, they're well coached, so they don't take bad shots. So you got that combination. But it's a heck of a basketball game, Jared. And let's say before we head off here to halftime, let's say thanks to Fairfield Medical Center is, um, here in Lancaster. They improve the quality of life through patient care and trust. Education, Fairfield Medical Center is people you know and care you trust. And our halftime sponsor tonight, Frankie Smith Funeral Home, family owned and operated since 1889. You can visit their website at funeralhome.com and it will guide you through the choice of dignified funeral services with personalized options. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Halftime also brought to you by North Body Shop, providing quality customer service, parts, and reliability since 1979. Stop by and see Mark North at 2067 East Main Street in Lancaster. He'll provide you with a free written warranty on each estimate. That's Mark North of North Body Shop. He'll treat you right. At halftime, the Falcons lead the Bulldogs 24-23. We're going to take a timeout. We'll be back with first half stats and analysis coming up next on the high school basketball game of the week. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Ohio University Lancaster, RN Smith Heating and Cooling, Standing Stone Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield National Bank, The Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home. North Body Shop. The Lancaster Eagle Gazette. Ohio Christian University. Kumler Collision. Lines Auto Service. The Carriage Company. Wall to Wall Floors. The Window Man. Kurt Bride Lawn Care. And Infinitely Outdoors. Awesome! Wow! I am 63 
inches. You're not done yet. Come experience the Huddle Tire difference. Locally owned and operated since 1910, we're your independent tire and auto repair shop. We carry all major brands of tires, including Goodyear, Cooper, BF Goodrich, and many more. But we're more than just tires. From safety inspections to alignments, brakes, shocks, and struts, even preventive maintenance, we can handle it all. Enjoy the ride at Huddle Tire Company, 300 South Columbus Street, or we can be reached at our website at huddletire.com. Are you having problems with your heating and cooling system? Is your unit not as efficient as it should be? Replacing your home heating and cooling system is a major decision, one that shouldn't rely on cost alone. To enjoy better, cleaner air today, call RN Smith Heating and Air Conditioning. We feature train air conditioners, heat pumps, ventilation systems, thermostats, parts, service, and much more. It's hard to stop a train. RN Smith Heating and Air Conditioning, now in their fourth generation, with a fleet of over 20 installation and service units, here to provide you with total customer satisfaction. This is a special place. A place that is leading the way. Serving society. Instilling values. Preparing today's workforce, eternally focused. This is Ohio Christian University. How do you grab the attention of your customers? Separate yourself from the competition. Explain how your products and services can make a difference. With Interphase Video. Interphase Video is a full-service, award-winning video production company with the experience, knowledge, and technology to deliver your message on time and within your budget. We realize the importance of identifying your target audience, understanding their needs, and delivering as promised. From sales and marketing, to broadcast commercials, from corporate training, to live staging and events, from television programs to mobile sports productions, even media transfers, duplication, and packaging. The team at Interface Video will take your project from concept to completion. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster or 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. IVP Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Ohio University Lancaster, R.N. Smith Heating and Cooling, Standing Stone Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield National Bank, The Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, North Body Shop, The Lancaster Eagle Gazette, Ohio Christian University, Kumler Collision, Lines Auto Service, The Carriage Company, Wall to Wall Floors, The Window Man, Kurt Bryan Lawn Care, and Infinitely Outdoors. Welcome you back to Fairfield Union High School, where at halftime, the Falcons lead 24-23 over the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs, as you see on the screen, our uh, 2016 winter homecoming court, uh, and the winners right in the middle of the screen there. Mackenzie Hurst was the queen, 
And I apologize, I did not catch the name of the uh, the king, so we'll have to get that. But congratulations to those young people. Uh, always a, a nice time of year. Everybody gets excited about that uh, when they get to high school. And I just wonder what they're going to do. Uh, you know, usually the dance is on Saturday night. They've got a make-up basketball game tomorrow night. Well, Matt McPhail told me that they moved the basketball game up a little bit. Did they? So they can all make it back for the homecoming okay. dance tomorrow evening. So Sounds good. He said, yeah, it's always working on a lot of things here at the end of the year. <laughs> and when you have cancellations late in the basketball season, there's only so many options for you. There we go. We've got it. Nathan Horn is the uh, king, and Mackenzie Hurst is the queen. So congratulations to Mackenzie and Nathan, uh, this year's queen and king of the uh, winter homecoming and, and since you mentioned Matt McPhail we want to send a shout out to Matt he always uh, he and his staff here do a tremendous job in, in getting us set up and uh, it doesn't get any better than this uh, mid court right on the court shoe no and he had to finagle a few things and um, I had able to speak to him before the game and he did that for us and we appreciate it because this puts us right in right in the action yeah. right here Jared I feel I, I feel like I could reach out and just pat them all on the back when they go by and of course uh, he gets a lot of assistance from Keith Barr as well uh, Keith uh, basketball coach here for several years uh, a while back and uh, of course his son Jordan played here was a phenomenal basketball player and now is playing at uh, OUL yep and Jordan was a heck of a golfer and baseball yeah, player right. and you know it's, it's just fun you know we, we talk about you know both these programs but uh, there's a great picture over there at the end of the Carroll bench. There's two ADs sitting in one place. Yeah, you're right. Now, we could make a rude comment about that, but we <laughs> won't. But uh, you see Matt McPhail and Chad Little discussing there. Anytime we come to Fairfield Junior or Bloom Carroll, we get treated properly. You're right. And, you know, we don't expect favors, but we do appreciate the accommodations those two guys always there make for are. their school district course. It's, it, it's really good. I. I love getting out in the mid-state league yep. and especially these two places. Doesn't matter if it's football or basketball. They always, uh, they're always, you know, we, we tell them we, we might be coming. Hey, come on out. We'll, we'll have it ready for you. So well, well, you we know, say Chad, thank you Chad's to Chad's the guys. girls basketball coach right. also. And his team was down the other night. I had an opportunity to see him here before the game started out in the lobby. They were down 17 to nothing. And they came back and won. Wow. That's impressive. And, uh, yeah, it is impressive that they hung in there. He said, we just couldn't make a shot in a half. And he said, but the second half, we couldn't miss. And I said, that's that's kind of the story when you coach young people. Yep, yep. From one half to the next. Well, let's take a look at some first half scoring. First of all, for the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs, who trail at 24-23. They had five guys uh, hit the scoring column. It was Grant, or rather Jared Lasky with five points. Gavin Brown had four. Griffin Dozer with three. Matt Smith had three. And Grant Dozer led the way for the Bulldogs with eight points. Bigger story for them are the three fouls apiece for their two big men, Caleb Downs and Matt Smith. I don't, I don't necessarily know that, you know, the three fouls particularly uh, mean quite as much, but it's the number of fouls, Jared. They, they had 11 fouls that yeah. had. That's way too many. It's hard to win if you're putting people on the foul line and have an easy uh, points. You know, uh, Colin Woodside's got eight points from the foul line. Yeah. You know, gosh, you're going to either have to figure out a way to defend him one-on-one -on -one better or they're going to have to clamp down from the perimeter and double team. And then you're giving up something on the, you know, uh, on the kick out because yeah. we saw early in the game, Colin made a really good opposite pass for a shot. So, you know, th th these people know their teams better than we do. They, you know, this is our first opportunity yep. to see both teams. They'll make the adjustments, and I guarantee you, like we talked earlier, it's not, it's not going to be a major overhaul. But what you do is you try to tweak some of the stuff that you do. Yeah. And you just got to adjust to officials. Um, you know, game is tightly called. I, I don't have any problem with most of the calls. First half scoring for the Falcons. They had four guys in the scoring column. Matthew Smith had three points. It was Lucas, Lucas Thompson with four. Thomas Green had five. And Colin Woodside led the way, led all scorers with 12 points. And, Shu, you mentioned the fouls. Fairfield Union uh, getting it done from the free throw line. Yes, they missed a few, but 50% of their points, 12 points came from the free throw line. That's huge, and it, it's hard to win. You know, we used to have a saying that we, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we had a saying that we wanted to make more than they shot. And, and I, I will bet you, Jared, that 95% of the time, if that happened, we scored more points at the end of the game. And you, you just got to keep people off the foul line. It, it's hard to overcome it. And, and unless you have a great, great 
field goal shooting team, especially from the three, it's hard to overcome giving up points at the free throw line. Sure, another thing that we saw in the first half, uh, in case people are just joining us at home, in the first quarter was still two minutes to go in the quarter. Uh, Bloom Carroll's assistant coach was hit with a technical foul, which means none of their coaches can now stand up for the rest of the game. How big of a deal is that? Uh, for Bloom Carroll, not that much. Uh, you know, you'll see some coaches rant, rave, jump sure. up and down, run all over. Listen, Coach Petty does his work in practice. Right. And, and you, you, they'll, they'll be ready because he does all the work there. All he does tonight is he manages players and makes adjustments. Yeah. Um, the kids are the kids are prepared, well coached. So from that opportunity, he, he doesn't have to do a lot of that raining and raving and jumping up and down. That's not coaching right. anyway. That's true. Blue Carroll starts with the basketball and a one-point deficit here in the second half. Griffin Dozer with it. We'll get it back to Justin Harvey. Out of Grant Dozer. See, already I see a little more movement out of the Bloom Carroll offense. Matt Smith's free throw in the, or rather, three-pointer in the corner, no good. The lob at the wood side. But see where they forced him to catch yeah, it? Yeah, he's pushed way out beyond yeah. the three-point line. See, and that's critical defensively. People say, well, he got the ball. Well, problem is he got pushed way out. Thomas Green gets a scoring starter for the Falcons. That's a very nice job by Thomas Green being under control, finishing that shot. Here's Smith. They'll give it off to Harvey. Now Dozer. Dozer drives, kick it back out. Smith thought about the three from the corner, takes it in, and a charge is going to be called on Matt Smith. That's foul number four. And again, I think the defender was set, but he's too far under. Yeah. Here, Jerry, we see a replay. Watch Tom Screen. Look how under control he is. Goes up, protects the ball, and finishes. That's a tough shot. And, and like I said about that charge ball, I, I think the defender's there, but I just don't like it that it's so deep. I, I wish they would change it to the college rule. Yeah. 26-23, Falcons with the lead in the basketball. Woodside gets it off to Price. Price, some nice ball handling, puts it up and in. I tell you, he has not been aggressive offensively tonight, and that's a really nice move by Hayden Price. And if there's anybody who ought to know how to score, it's Hayden. You know, his uncle, Zandy Connell. And uh, I was fortunate to coach Andy for a couple of years at Fisher. Look at the Price. Yeah. Look at Hayden finish there. And he was a great offensive player, and he never met a shot he didn't like. <laughs> so I'd like to see Hayden be a little more aggressive. 29-23 after Price hits the bucket and the free throw. Coach Petty calls a timeout, has a word with the official. Our timeouts tonight are brought to you by the Carriage Company, located at 1031 North Memorial Drive. You can check out their sweet deals on their website at carriagecompany.com. And it looked to me like Shu, I don't know, if, did he have a couple of subs trying to get it checked into the ball game and the I, officials didn't let him in? I, I didn't understand. There was no dead ball, though, Jared. Unless it was on the free throw, maybe. that, And maybe the clock missed it, too. I yeah. mean, that does happen. You're, you're right, it does. And, you know, in, in doing PA announcing at Lancaster, I see it all the time. Guys will duck down real low. You don't see them or they don't come all the way over to the, yep. to the scorer's table. And so it's an honest mistake. But Coach Petty, unfortunately for him, had to call a timeout to get his subs in. Yeah, there used to be places sometimes I felt, Jared, it was not an honest mistake. <laughs> <laughs> there was design behind it. Here's Brown. He'll give it back to Dozer. 29-23, Falcons lead. Gavin Brown on the drive. Ooh, almost had his pass stolen away. Grant Dozer regains control. Those are backing his way in, and a whistle and a foul going to be called on the Falcons. That's going to be Matthew Smith, and that'll be his third. They have just called it that way the whole game, Jerry. Right. I, I mean, I have They've no qualms. Uh, it has. They have called the block, uh, oh, impeding the dribbler, and it's frustrating for a player that wants to play. You know, he's been in foul trouble most of the night. Matt Smith here, I believe it was. Got that foul. Yeah, Matt Smith picked up his third, so yeah. he checks out. And coming in is Brad Miller, Grant Dozer. Kicks it back out to Brown. Now to Justin Harvey. There's Caleb Downs with the basketball. Dozer for three, no good. 
Rebounded by the Falcons. Bulldogs still yet to score in this third quarter. Thomas Green being worked on by Grant Dozer. He'll take a screen and fire up a three-pointer and hit it. Wow, now you got a little gap here. You got a nine-point lead. Now you find out. You find out about your team when you're playing from behind. You find about, as the Falcons will find out, how good are we? How, how tough are we right now? Because Carroll's going to come after them. Falcons have outscored them 8-0 here in this third quarter. And you know you gamble on defense. You know what happens usually? Dozer has a shot blocked, but he did a good job getting That's his own what rebound and putting it up and in. That's what happens when players gamble on defense and don't get it. That, that just kills your defense. Whistle and a foul going to be called on Grant Dozer. I like his look, though. He, he, you know what? He's totally under poise. Look at Thomas Green, man. He's out there, but he's confident. I like his stroke and his, you know, his fortitude. He, he's, he's got a belief in it. You can see it. You saw the Kumler Collision replay. I'll give you their information uh, next dead ball. We'll talk about Kumler Collision. 32-25, and there's a pass almost stolen away. Grant Dozer. Really missed an opportunity there. Yeah, you know, Hayden's just got to read the defense. Look at the purple shirt, you know, and, and, and then read and take what it gives. If, if he's overplayed, go back cut and then re replay the play. Price backs his way down in. His shot's no good. Ball loose on the floor. Woodside hustles for it. And they call a foul. He did. He jumped on his back. I was blocked by the other official, so I no. couldn't see it. Unfortunately, it looked like uh, Colin Woodside, who, you know, it was Bronco bull riding night. <laughs> they call it on Griffin Dozer. That's his fourth. So now the Bulldogs with two players with four fouls. Justin Harvey checks back in for Bloom Carroll. Jared Lasky came in Watch on the here. last dead ball. Here's a play, Jared. Now, look, Colin's got the ball. Look what oh, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Been a great tackle in football. Thomas Green, the three, in and out. And now a whistle and a foul going to be called on the Falcons, Brad Miller. That'll be three on him. So Matthew Smith's going to check back in. He has three fouls. So he'll replace Brad Miller, who has three. And as tight as this game's being called, consistently tight, I don't know I'd want a guy in there with three fouls right now, 4.45 to play in the third quarter. Well, you have to know your players, and, and some of them can play. Yeah. And you try to learn that throughout the year. Here's Lasky. He gave him a spark in the first half, and he's going to the free throw line right now. They called the foul on Hayden Price. That's his second. Jared Lasky, first trip to the free throw line tonight. He does have five points. First one's up and good. He's been a really big boost to their offense off the bench. Second for Lasky, also good. 32-27 is the score. Price being worked on by Justin Harvey. Picks up his dribble, gets it down to the corner to Matthew Smith. Here's Thompson. Lost it momentarily. Back out now to Smith. Woodside now. Nice kick out. Three-pointer for Smith. No good. No arch on the shot. Just didn't get enough on it. Yeah. He's rebounded by the Bulldogs. Carroll ran a second defender at him, and, and it made a difference. He had to kick it out. I mean, you can't let him just have layups or fouls. You've got to make them prove that they can shoot the ball. Good job by the Carroll defense. Long range three, no good. Gavin Brown. Nice pass to Grant Dozer. He puts it up and yeah, in, and he's fouled. A, that's a real good pass. You know, Grant Dozer is the only senior on that Bloom Carroll team. Unbelievable. I know. You know, the Falcons are a young team, too, though, Jared. If you if you look down their roster, um, I believe they only have three seniors on the basketball team. So it, it's uh, these are two young teams that should be good down the road. Yeah. They do have three seniors. One, Logan McNeil, is out with a what looks like a knee injury, which is unfortunate for him in his senior season. 
Yep. Six it's... foot four post player. See the double? See the double, Jared? Woodside. Strong to the hoop, puts it in, and he's fouled. Didn't matter, but what they have to do is, you know, and give Colin a lot of credit. I like how he crab dribbled at that time and got it low, and, he, and then he powered and got his shoulders square to the basket. But the bottom line is, from the defensive side, your perimeter people, they have to go dig it and dig the loose ball and attack the dribble. Now watch right here, one, two, and then he squares his shoulders. Yeah, That's that just physical strength. Oh yeah, there, there's, there's, you know, he's a load in there and he's done a good job. Caleb Downs has called for it. That's his fourth. They now have three players with four fouls as Colin Woodside goes to the free throw line to try to make it a three point play. Woodside, a six foot five sophomore. Free throws up and good. From all the post people we've seen this year, and we haven't seen them all, but right. he's got the best feet around the basket right now. Now, obviously there are things he can do to get better, and I'm not gonna elaborate on that right now, but he's the best we have right now in the area as far as playing post. He's taking a little rest. Yeah. 35-29, Falcons with the lead. Gavin Brown, nice shot off the glass and in. See what he did better there? He took the ball to the basket yep. under control. And for somebody that's not shot well, and he's used to shooting the ball well, you know, give him credit, understanding how to play the game. Price. Now they'll skip it over to Wolshire. Now back to Matthew Smith. Price now at the basketball, just under three minutes to play in this third quarter. Three point attempt put up and in for Lucas Thompson. Tell you what, he no hesitation. I, I mean, he just pulled Catch the trigger. Shoot. Yep, he caught it and shot it. 38-31, seven point lead for the Falcons. Harvey gives it off to Brown. Lasky now will fire a three, in and out. And a whistle and a travel going to be called. That's a good call. He took yep. a step before he put it on the floor. Boy, yeah, that, that you know, in these low possession games, that just drives you crazy. Look at the three here. Watch him catch. And he is out, almost yeah. out of bounds. Replay tonight brought to you by Kumler Collision and Automotive. They have the solution for all of your auto truck, RV repairs and maintenance. No matter what the need is with your vehicle, they can handle it. Kumler Collision and Automotive, quality total vehicle repair committed to you. Committed to our customers. 38-31's the score. Dump inside to Justin Harvey. His shot block gets it right back. And now dribbles it out of bounds. Boy, you want to get the ball out of the corner. The corner is not a good place to play the game. You got to get it up on top. After you, you know, you didn't have success. You want to just get it out of there and move the basketball. It's hard for young players to understand that sometimes, though, Jared. 2.08 on a running third quarter clock. Falcons lead at 38-31. Big Mid-State League Buckeye Division battle. Woodside gets it back to Thompson. Now in the corner, it's Price. Price backs his way down in, now gives it to Green. Green on the drive, puts <laughs> it up, scoop shot and in. Gotta like it. You Gotta like it, Thomas just took it and Gave it a, a scoop is about the best way to, de, to explain it. Nine point lead for the Falcons, 40 to 31. Here's Brown. Get it inside now to Grant Dozer, nice pass to Justin Harvey. Now back to Dozer. Here's Lasky, he'll fire up a three and hit it. Man, what, what a good timeout too by Bloom Carroll here. 10 points for Lasky off the bench. Watch the replay here. Watch Thomas Green. And a whoop de doo Yeah. You gotta love it. Good hands. Good Should hands. Should we have some, uh, some more sponsors that we would like to say thank you to tonight? As always, let's thank Ohio University Lancaster and the Pickerington Center. They offer more than 250 majors that can begin here locally and finish in Athens at other regional campuses or even online. Discover your promise at Ohio University by earning an associate or bachelor's degree starting now. 
And let's say thanks to your community newspaper, the Lancaster Eagle Gazette, which gives you news, weather, sports, and so much more at LancasterEagleGazette.com. For up-to-date game stats, look for them on Twitter at hashtag Eagle Gazette. Had a great basketball game here tonight at Fairfield Union. Right now the Falcons lead at 40 to 34, minute 14 to play in the third quarter. And you see there a shot, you see the crowd, that's on the, the side that we're on. You just see a little bit of the student section there. It's a pink out tonight in the student section. They've been loud cheering their team on as they're leading at 40 to 34. This is what high school basketball is all about. It's good oh, to see yeah. this back in Fairfield County. It is. And, you know, it takes two to make it work. So it's good the Falcons are improved and yep. competing now because Bloom Carroll's always been that way. They've always competed and, and, and made it a challenge for anybody. And now we got it, Now we got us a game, Jared. Thomas Green, lob inside. And Woodside puts it in and he's fouled. Wow, high load him. Well, you know what? He 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 felt he knew it was coming. He's he's got some savvy in there. You know, for being a sophomore, he's got a little savvy around the basket. Now watch him. You know what he did? He did travel. And uh, I'm not here to criticize <laughs> the officials, but he picked the pivot up. But it was small, Jared. It was so small. That they, you know, we have the advantage of the instant yeah. replay. I saw the little move of the foot. 18 points in the game for Colin Woodside. 10 of those from the free throw line tonight. 43-34, nine point lead for Fairfield Union. Gavin Brown gives it back to Lasky. Lasky puts the shot up and in. I like the way Lasky's playing. Tell you what, man, he's a good offensive player. He's got, a, he's got a mix in his game too, you know. He's got that short range pull up. He's shown he can get to the basket. Uh, Carroll go trap, trap a little bit. Three pointer, no good. Nice rebound for Brad Miller, and he puts it in. Hey, well, that's that's a very, very impressive rebound. Stick back. First points for Brad Miller. 45-36, the lead remains nine for Fairfield Union. Down to 17 seconds in the third quarter. And the ball's tipped, and it'll stay with Bloom Carroll with 13.3 seconds showing on the clock. Yeah, big possession here, Jared. Big possession both ways. Bulldogs will inbound. Lasky to do it. Gets it into Harvey. Clock down to 10 seconds. Harvey to Dozer. Down to six seconds. Dozer puts a shot up. No good. Nice backside rebound for Gavin Brown, and a foul is going to be called on the Falcons. And you know what's tough about that? The Fairfield Union kids were trying to do the right thing, but an air ball is always hard because it's you don't gauge for yeah. an air ball. It's tough. Anybody that's played the game understands that. You, 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 gauge, you, you, know, you gauge for it hitting the rim or the, at least the backboard, and it just doesn't. It's, those are tough. Matthew Smith was called for it. That's his fourth. He had just checked back into the ball game less than 30 seconds ago as Gavin Brown misses the first free throw. Well, you've got to have other kids ready to play yep. because things happen, whether it be injuries, foul trouble, or whatever. Brad Miller comes back in as Brown hits the second free throw. 45-37, one second on the clock. Thomas Green, thought it, it looked like it was on line from here. It sure did. So at the end of three, the Falcons lead at 45-37. This has been an entertaining basketball game. And Shu, we uh, have some more sponsors we want to thank, or did you get them all in? Look at this here first. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's crowd surfing there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Jared, let's say thanks to Standing Stone Bank. Whether you're buying, remodeling, or refinancing, you can contact them today at one of their two convenient locations. Remember, they're there when it counts, and now they have mobile banking. And let's also thank Infinitely Outdoors. They provide a complete design center for all your outdoor needs, including design and build services for soft and hardscapes. They also design and build water features. Need rocks? Holy, pink, green, black? They have them. Infinitely Outdoors is conveniently located at 450 West Fair Avenue across from Goodwill. They take the comforts of the inside out. Well, Shu, if we look at the quarter-by-quarter -quarter scoring, it was Fairfield Union at the end of one, 11 to 8. They had a three-point lead, 24-23 at halftime, a one-point lead, 
And then that third quarter, they blitzed him right at the beginning, and they lead it now by eight, 45-37. Well, they had a little burst there. And, and you know, that's what separates these, these possession by possession games. And, you know, Coach Eversold talked to me earlier about he just felt some players have to make the plays when you need to make them. Thomas Green kicks it back out. Now he'll take it back, fire up a long range three, and he got it. Green. Green. 10 points in this half for Thomas Green to give him 15 in the ball game. And the biggest lead of the night for the Falcons at 11, 48-37. Gavin Brown gets it inside to Dozer. He puts it in and he's fouled. Nice cut, nice pass. Foul is called on Hayden Price. That's his third. Those are free throw off the front, no good. Thomas Green who just hit that last three for the Falcons. Uh, he's got their, Carroll's best defender on him right yeah. now, Grant Dozer. Get back to Hayden Price. Price, back to Green now. There's Thompson. They kick it over to Price, lob inside, Woodside, and a whistle. Foul going to be called on the Bulldogs. And again, just the hands, Jared. I can't talk enough about how you have to play defense with your feet and the other parts of your body, but it's all technique right now. All those fouls are technique fouls. Foul was called on number 22. It's Ben Spangler. Yeah, Ben played in the JV game, but you know, that's many yeah. fouls that. Free throw up and good for Woodside. Colin, second free throw up, and also good. Boy, what an asset that is to have, the big man who can shoot free throws like that. I mean, you have to, if you're gonna get fouled, you have to learn to make them. Well over half of his points are from the free throw line. 50 to 39 is the score, 6.45 to play in the ball game. Matt Smith, his shot no good. And rebounded by the Falcons. Smith playing with those four fouls. But this is crunch time right now for the Bulldogs. They need him. Double team in the post. He read it. And it's going to be a block, and Matt Smith is done. It's going to be the fifth foul on Matt Smith. Well, it, you know, if we saw the replay of this, you can see, look at the double team. Now, the double team goes away, and now Colin goes to dribble. There is contact. I mean, whether it's a foul or not, I don't want to get into arguing that over right. here from the sidelines. We, we have 400 people behind us doing the same thing. <laughs> So Woodside back to the free throw line. Up and good. Second free throw, no good. That's his first one he's missed in a long time. Yeah, he had a streak going there. Yeah, he did. 51-39 Falcons. 12 points with 6.19 to go, Jared. Mark that down. We'll find out whether Carroll has a surge in him. There's Williams. He'll get it back to Griffin Dozer. Griffin drives to the block. He puts a shot up and in. Nice job by Griffin Dozer. He's had a nice ball game tonight. And a whistle and a timeout called by Bloom Carroll. With 5.58 to play in the ball game and a 10-point deficit for the Bulldogs. Notice that face? Recognize yes, that guy? Do. It's Del Barr. He's the got 
Got his uh, Millersport Lakers jacket on as he's the girls coach over at Millersport now. Yeah, you remember 1992, yep. they went to LU and won the state championship 28-0. Not a bad so that's, year, that's not hard, a bad that year. That is hard to do. It's hard to go undefeated anytime, anywhere. Dell's a great coach, and, and, and even better, he's a good person, Jared. Colin Wood's side in the ball game has 13 points from the free throw line, and he has eight points from the field. <laughs> well, he's equaled what he had the first game. He had 21 points up at Bloom Carroll eight days ago, and he's got 21 tonight. See the pressure coming a little bit from Carroll now. Whether they're going to run and trap or a little bit. See, that's what Hayden's got to do. Yeah. Just not mess around with the ball and beat the pressure. Yep. Green fires up a three. No wow. good. That's just a, that's early. I mean, you don't want to stop playing with yeah. five minutes ago, but that's just, you know, one pass shot. That That's tough. But you've just had success moving the ball and attacking the basket. Fine line there, Jared. There's a fine line. There's Dozer. And it's going to be an offensive foul on Griffin Dozer, and that's five on him. He did dip the shoulder. So Griffin Dozer is the second player to foul out. That hurts. He's Bloom been Carroll. playing well. You yes, can see he here. Now, see? Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I, I mean, Jared, I, I know the Bloom Carroll people don't think that it's right, but, but that's the right call in that situation. He dipped his shoulder and made the contact. 33 fouls called in this ball game so far. It's been a lot. We, we, you know, we we talked about that early that we would be here for a while with the free throw <laughs> shooting escapades here in the fourth quarter. Long pass comes in to Hayden Price. They get it back to Lucas Thompson. Thompson on the drive. His shot's blocked. Woodside, nice hustle for the basketball. And a timeout going to be called by Coach Eversole. Yeah, I like that timeout by Alex, man. You know what? You don't want to be passive here, though. You do want to attack the basket. Shoot, talk about the job that Alex Eversall has done here. Just He's a young coach, but he is already, just in his second year, really just turned this program around. Well, Alex comes in, you know, he had played at coach, with coach Petty, so he had a good background there. You know, he spent three years as an assistant at Lancaster, so he got to view some things. Or He was the JV coach, so he yeah. had to coach his own team, which – which helps you learn as a young coach. Right. And then he went up and assisted Coach Petty for two years. So, you know, he's got good background. And then he's come into a situation that they have young players. They really hadn't won yet. And he just provided organization. They've got some toughness to them, Jared. They, they, they've got a ways to go to get even better, which is good. You like to have an upside. But I, I like how they're organized, and they, they just know – how to play. Yeah. They, you know, they throw the ball inside. They, they do what's instructed, and they're a good defensive team. Here's Lasky, who's played well tonight off the bench for the Bulldogs. 12 points in the game for Jared Lasky. He'll get it to Grant Dozer. Now Grant's going to be aggressive because he's an offensive player. Wow. Could not get that one to go. Yeah, that's just bad luck. Uh, you know, that's a, that, that's a good attack. Yeah. See, I think you got to try to find Woodside on the block again. And here they go with Green and Woodside. You got your two best players. Kick back to Price, now over the left side. Lucas Thompson, a long range three. I'm telling you, that's an NBA one right there. 10 points for Lucas Thompson, 54 41. Here's Lasky, he'll fire up a three. No good, rebounded by Woodside. He has been the chairman of the boards tonight, I tell you that. Hayden Price, quick kick out. Three-pointer put up, no good for Brad Miller, and it's out of bounds. It'll go back to Bloom Carroll. Like I said, you get to a fine line. <laughs> when do you shoot that thing? You know, you're at four minutes. You're 13. What if we run clock? Yeah, It is. It's a fine line, but, yeah. you, you know, there's a lot of philosophies on how to coach. I'm not going to sit here and say, guess these guys know their teams better than any of us here in the stands. Gavin Brown. Misses, rebounded by Jared Lasky. Nice job by Lasky on he the has, ball fake. He's a player. I mean, he, he he made sure that he got him in the air, didn't he? Yeah. Because he didn't bite on the first fake. And, and he kept his feet square. I tell you, Lasky's had a big, big game for the for the Bull, Bloom Carroll Bulldogs. 14 points to lead the Bulldogs. Make that 15 with the free throw. Back to an 11, or check that 10-point 
game. 54-44. We'll skip it up to Brad Miller. Miller over to Woodside. Now to Hayden Price. See, Carroll putting the pressure on them to make sure, see if they'll attack. You know, finding out where they are. Are they in between? See, now you pick it up in the corner. And Coach Eversall call, <laughs> calls a timeout. And you know what? You can just tell they just, you know, they're still growing and learning, trying to understand what do you do? Four, four minutes, how do you play? Yeah. But you've got to practice those things, Jared. You have to create those scenarios in practice and talk about, okay, when it's we're up this, we're down this, here's a situation, here's the, here's the foul. So you, you have to teach them, and the only way you can do that is you've got to practice them. Then you have to live them in the live game ceremony. Sure, I tell you what, uh, Circleville and Logan Elmer sitting at home tonight, or they're playing tonight, but they're, they're thinking, yeah, j just keep beating on each other yeah. up there in, in Rushville. But I tell you what, <laughs> this you know this race is going to not be decided until probably next Tuesday. It's true. So, and that's a, you know that's good. That's a lot of enthusiasm and excitement for teams. And heck, I may get out and go to one of those games to be honest with you. Fairfield Union will host or check that they will go to Circleville tomorrow, and Bloom Carroll will host Logan Elm tomorrow. Yeah. Both of those will be big ball games. Woodside, nice spin move inside the paint. Couldn't get it to go, and now he's going to yeah. be called for the foul. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be four on Colin Woodside. Colin Woodside is four. He left the official no choice there, Jack. You're right. That's all right, he's hustling after. He just missed the shot. That's his fourth foul, though. But again, that's just, you know, just youth and aggression. And, and you know, in a way, you'd like to say, okay, you missed it. Just like, but, you know, right. when, you, when you play up and you play hard all the time, it's tough to just back off like that. Caleb Downs at the free throw line, no good. Nice box out by Brad Miller to get the rebound. Hayden Price drives, kick it back out to Miller. He'll go baseline. And now here's Thomas Green down to yeah. 313. Yeah, these are big possessions. Carroll's putting the pressure on him, like I said, chasing him, hedging at him, trapping the sidelines here. They're going to have to go to the basket and shoot a layup. You know, I've always felt you attack pressure. You beat pressure by making them pay. Now, you have to be intelligent, and you have to have a scheme to do that. But if you become passive, that's all the defense's advantage. And in this situation, you don't want to play to hang on here. Right. You want to play to win. Grant Dozer's called for the foul. That sends Gavin, or rather Matthew Smith to the free throw line. First one's no good. It's double bonus time for the Falcons. As Cole Williams comes back into the ball game for Bloom Carroll. Second free throw, no good. That's what Carroll wanted was Absolutely. two missed free throws. Quickly the other way comes Grant Dozer, no good. Got to look up the floor. Somebody's got to be open yeah. if they're chasing the ball in the backcourt. Smith skips it over to Thomas Green. <laughs> That's a good catch is what that is. Yeah. Now Hayden Price, 237 to play in the ball game. And a whistle and a foul going to be called on the Bulldogs. Thomas Green going to go to the free throw line and shoot two. I think they're going to get Grant Dozer again, his third. Falcons lead it by 10, 54-44. Shoot, you remember, I think it was just two years ago, maybe three. But the Falcons, we, we had their game out there at Bloom Carroll, and it was an absolute blowout. Bloom Carroll blew it's out the Fairfield while. Union. But the Falcons, in just a couple of quick years, have, have really turned it around. And this is going to be, if they can hold on here, a huge win for them. Yeah, it, it'll make a statement to where they're getting. Um, I, I know Coach Eversole doesn't feel like they're done yet. Yeah. And he's not. I mean, you, you've got to play to get better every day. I mean, you've got to practice to get better. And, and they've got a ways to go to get better. Now, with that being said, they're good, Jared. Yeah. You know, make no bones about it. I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, knock the kids or the program down. But there's a, if you want to get to the top of the pile, you got to continue to get better. Gavin Brown, scoop shot no good. Rebounded by Micah Ferrant, and no good 
On the other end is Hayden Price putting it up and in. Now Hayden showed his athleticism there. You know, at times he doesn't do that, but he really showed some explosion right there. 57-44, 2.04 to play in the ball game. Barrett throws wow. it to Lasky. You sure? <laughs> <laughs> nice job on the drive by Gavin Brown to put it up and in. Yeah, that's a good job attacking the basket because you don't have to shoot bad threes right now. You can still get back into the game. Well, with a minute 51 to play in the ball game, game not over yet, 11 uh, point deficit for the Bulldogs, but we have to name a couple of uh, players of the game, one from each team. Let's go with the uh, the Bloom Carroll player of the game, first of all, brought to you by Lines Auto, located at 268 North Broad Street in Bremen, open Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5.30 p.m., or visit them online at www.linesauto.com. Well, Jared, you know, I, I think um, Grant Dozier's had a heck of a game as a senior, but I, I think Jared Lasky's been really the big, the big step for them. He's come in off the bench and provided them a lot of energy offense and done a really nice job. Both those players have been fantastic tonight. So congratulations to Jared Lasky, our Lions Auto player of the game for the Bloom Carroll Bulldogs. Tonight's Fairfield Union player of the game brought to you by Fairfield National Bank. Have you wondered if it's the right time to buy a home or build one? Want to know what you can afford? What options are out there? What's the next step? Fairfield National Bank is already helping many people who dreamed of a new home make it happen this year. Our lenders give you straight answers, and we make decisions locally so you get the money you need quickly. Fairfield National Bank is a division the Park National Bank Equal Housing Lender, member FDIC. And we will get to that Fairfield Union player of the game in just a few moments. The Woodside's back in the game, and I like that they use him to pass to beat pressure. Now here comes the trap on the sideline. Green is trapped, and a timeout called by Coach Eversall. See, first of all, your players have to understand don't go to the sideline. Yes. The sideline's another defender because it limits the things you can do and the space you can do. And, that, and that's what I'm talking about when I say they can get better. They can get better in understanding the situations and understanding the game situations. Well, Shu, our uh, Fairfield Union, Fairfield National Bank player of the game. I think, you know, there's a couple of different guys. Uh, Thomas, well, Thomas Green's, Green's, had, Green's had, a had a really, really good big second, second half, half yeah. but I tell you, the guy that makes some goes Colin Woodside yep. um, because he's the anchor in the post. They feed off of him. And, and he, he's just rock solid right now for a sophomore. And like I said, he's got an upside yet to get even better. And uh, But what I like is where he's gotten his point to now in the game, you know, because in all honesty, he's not a sophomore anymore. This That's is true. This is game 21. Yeah. You know what? You're closer to a junior than you are a sophomore. So, you know, the big key for him is, you know, he's a multi-sport athlete. Well, and he just started to see him get better. He started and played all year last year, too, as a freshman. Yeah, so. yeah. So you just want to see him improve yeah. and get better. And uh, But I like what I see, and I like what I see out of the Falcon team. And like I said, Thomas Green, he just had a big half here. So the Falcons lead at 57-46, minute 38 to play in the ball game. Hayden Price with it. Got to protect the ball. That's and a nice job by Hayden Price. Quick pass over to Green. Bend your knees, protect the ball, don't panic. And you, that, you got Stolen picked. away. Yep. Justin Harvey going the other way, puts it up off glass, no good, gets his own rebound, and puts it in. Wow. 57-48, a nine-point lead for the Falcons. Nice pass over to Woodside. Couldn't get the shot. See, I, I, I like throws. that. There's people who think no, you got to attack pressure, Jared, because Carroll has nothing to lose right now to go after the ball. So you got to attack pressure. Cole Williams is calling for the foul. Colin Woodside will shoot two free throws. Well, he's had enough practice. He, he shouldn't have to <laughs> practice to warm up. You know what he do there? Did you notice didn't what he use did? His legs. Well, and he stepped backwards. Yeah, you're right. You cannot step backwards. Your motion must be straight up, and if there's any motion, it goes to the basket. See that? That's yep, better. Much better. Yeah. It's amazing how little things, though, but that, that's how you get better as a player. You don't allow those mistakes to happen. Back to a 10-point lead. Gavin Brown, three from the top of the key. Got it. I tell you what, he's, he's really hung in there tonight. He, he had a tough game shooting the ball, but he's hung in there. Lead not down over to yet, seven Jared. for the Falcons. It is not. They're trying to foul. Now they won't blow the whistle. There's a steal. Quickly up ahead to Brown. It's two on one. Brown to the hoop. Puts it up and in. 
A five-point lead for the Falcons with 40 seconds to go. You know what? You never doubt a champion. No, you don't. And there's one thing I know about Carroll's team. They're never going to surrender. And they're going to be organized. Ten points in this half for Gavin Brown, 14 in the game for him. And I tell you what, Shu, he has really stepped it up. And, you know, that's a situation where they're trying to foul. They wouldn't call it, but it goes their way anyway. That's yeah. twice that they've gotten a, a turnover. They're just poor choices uh, by the Falcons. And like I said, it's hard to sit here. And, you know, people in the area might not understand. You go, well, my gosh, they're 16-4. and four. There's a good chance they might win this game tonight. What do you mean they need to get better? Well, if you haven't watched the last two minutes, there's a long way to getting yeah. better. Yep. And, and we don't necessarily mean physically. We mean mentally and as a team and as a group. And uh, those are things that you like as a coach because if you're coaching, you're teaching. And Alex has done a nice job with this group this year. Yep. 58-53, 40.9 seconds showing on the clock. Our side of the gym where we sit, Shu, all on their feet. <laughs> Bloom Carroll side starting to come to their feet. Well, this is a huge possession right here, Jared. It's, the game's down to two possessions. Look at the funky, funky Falcon. Falcon. Hey, doing some jumping jacks, isn't he? <laughs> Smith inbounds to Woodside. Not a price, quick ball movement. Back to Smith. Got to look down the floor, though. And it's stolen away. Oh, and he lost it out of bounds. Wow. Tell you what, players must face the basket like you teach them in half court and look down the floor. Possession arrow in case of a tie-up is in, the, in favor of Bloom Carroll. Here's Thomas Green. And he's quickly fouled as the clock stops at 30.4. So Thomas Green goes to the free throw line. He's three of four at the line tonight. Always shooting him. It's always different shooting him, Jared, in the last minute. Some players are really good free throw shooters, but not in the last minute. And you can see Thomas, nothing but net there. He'll get another one. These are big because this turns, this free throw will make it a three possession game. They got it. And the, and the thing with 30 seconds is, I don't know if there's three possessions yeah, that's in That's true. It. And, and that's why those are huge. Here's Lasky. He'll step back, fire up a three, no good. Loose ball, fought <laughs> for, and out of bounds. It goes to Fairfield Union. Tough spot. You want to get it in bounds. You got a tough spot there. Alex. A whistle and a timeout going to be called. Yeah, not a bad job there. You want you want to let if you get this ball in and you do what you're supposed to do to beat the pressure, you win the game. This is the final possession of their chance. But if you don't, that's a tough spot there. Coming up at the conclusion of this game, we'll give you our final stats, and uh, we're going to try to get a word with Coach Eversall, or if a miracle could happen here with 19.9, Coach Petty. The winning coach will try to get a hold of them uh, so you can hear their comments after this game. Can't promise anything, but we'll try. And uh, as we were throwing out some thank yous to Matt McPhail and Keith Barr, we also want to say thanks to these two coaches, Coach Eversall and Coach Petty, both yeah. took time out of their week this week to talk to you, Shrew. Yeah, and I appreciate that. They, they, they really enhance our broadcast here. Did I have an opportunity to speak to them about their teams? And uh, it's very appreciated. So 19.9, 60 to 53 is a score. Green to inbound, gets it into Woodside, back to Green now. And they need to foul, and they finally do. Had him on the sideline right where you want him. Caleb Downs was not fouling him. He has four, but at this point, it who doesn't cares? Matter, you yeah. need to get a foul. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You're playing the clock right now, but you're pretty much out of time now, Jared. Grant Dozer was called for the foul, his fourth, and Thomas Green goes back to the free throw line. First one's up and good. Thomas Green with three big free throws here in these last 30 seconds, and he's got another one coming right here. That one's also good. 15 seconds, 62-53. Here's Gavin Brown. Gives it over. Grant Dozer fires up a three. No good. Down to seven seconds. Three-point attempt for Justin Harvey is good. But it's not going to be enough as time is going to run out and the Fairfield Union Falcons will beat 
The Bloom Carroll Bulldogs, 62 to 56, is your final score. Student section comes onto the floor. Is they're excited? Been a long time, Shu, since they've knocked off Bloom Carroll. Yeah, I can't tell you how long it's been to be exact. I don't have the historical data, but that's a, that's a great win for this Falcon team, Jared. So Shu, as we uh, talked uh, earlier, you said was 619 to go. The lead was 12 for Fairfield Union. I tell you, I said Bloom pay Carroll, attention to that number. Bloom Carroll got it down to five. Surprisingly, I mean, you know, Fairfield Union kind of laxed off there, played little, little, uh, I guess you'd call almost lazy at the end. Um, I don't know if it's much lazy. It's just the decision making yeah. there, just understanding where sidelines are, uh, gaps at looking down the floor, and those type things. I, I just think you got to, you know, it's just part of the game and learning how to play the game late uh, when you're ahead. But I tell you, this will, this will be a big step to helping them do that. Tallying up the final scoring for both these teams, both of them had several players in the uh, scoring column. We're going to try to get Coach Eversall over here. Well, it's hard. You know, you want to address your team and, right. and you want to go in, but uh, it would be a great opportunity for us to get to speak with him if sure. we can. Well, as we uh, wait to see if we're going to be able to do that, we'll run down some scoring. First of all, for Bloom Carroll, they had three guys in double figures. Matt Smith had three points to finish the ball game. It was Justin Harvey with five. Griffin Dozer had five. Gavin Brown had a big second half to finish with 14. Grant Dozer had 14. And Jared Lasky led them off the bench tonight with 15 points. For Fairfield Union, it was Matthew Smith with three points. Brad Miller had two. It was... Uh, Lucas Thompson with 10 points. Hayden Price had five. Thomas Green with 20. Colin Woodside led the Falcons with 22 points. And uh, Colin Woodside is joining us. And I'm going to turn, uh, I was going to let Shu interview him, but he had, uh, we'll, we'll turn the microphone over to Shu so he can interview him. So, Colin, what do you think? Ooh. <laughs> Crazy. That's great fun, isn't it? Yes. It's fun to win. Yes, a lot of fun. You know, I, I had an opportunity to watch you here, and uh, I was fortunate to be in. Uh, a coach for a long time and uh, what I said was I thought your feet, footwork was extremely good tonight and I thought you caught the ball well and uh, what do you guys do specifically to get you some isolations? Screen. That's screen. a screening? Screen. Yeah. They wanted me to, uh, a lot of screen into the post and when I, the ball's on the other side screening to get me back open. Yeah I agree with that because your man has to help some in the screens. I, I also like that you're on the outside and, and you're not always locked into the block. You play on the perimeter, but you give it up and get back inside. That's harder to defend. Yeah, yeah, it opens up a lot for, like I said, that back screen that opens it up a lot. I was surprised that uh, known Coach Petty for a long time that they didn't run another guy at you when you put the ball on the floor. Uh, did you expect to have more double teams coming at you? Yeah, we expected it actually after that game I had against them last yeah. last game. But we, they, we expected the double team. Yeah, but I thought they kind of, you know, they, they gave you a false couple of times, a fal uh, fake double teams, but they kind of let you play one-on-one, -on -one, and I thought you yeah. did a great job of crab dribbling and um, taking your time and getting to the basket. So that, That's what we worked on this week in practice, yeah. was taking, taking that time just in case they did double team, letting it, letting them come fake and then go. Yeah, I, oh, I thought you did a great job with your poison. And, and as I told uh, Jared here, I said, the thing I like, Colin, is you're a good player right now, but you have an upside. You're going to get even better, and that's uh, – that's, that's what Coach keeps saying. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's a I smart two, guy. And he got two more years. <laughs> well, you are. You're going to get better because, you you know, I can tell how hard you work. I thought you did a great job on the boards. Uh, you struggled at the foul line early, but you didn't let it bother you. No. Because your stroke looks great. And, you know, I think that just comes with your confidence and focus. Yeah, and, yep. Um, but uh, I say congratulations. It's been a while since Fairfield Union's um, had a team fighting for the league championship. Yeah, yes. and we're, we're excited about it. We live in Fairfield County. We're, we're happy because Coach Petty's team's always going to be fighting there. Yep, and we're yep. glad to see the Falcons back up there. So I want to say congratulations to you and um, get back at it tomorrow because you know what? You guys got a we're big one. Yep. Yeah, you got to go to Pickaway yep. County and play, and it's never easy there, is nope. it? All right. Nope. Well, good luck to you, Colin. Thank you. Keep working, man.
Well, first of all, I gotta say congratulations. I mean, I can tell by that smile how that feels, man. Oh, that felt good, man. Oh, well, yeah. you know what? You guys had a solid night tonight. Um, yeah. What do you think uh, offensively? Really, you know, I, I I thought that Bloom Carroll, to be honest with you, was going to come and trap your post a lot more. And, and I told Colin, I thought he did a great job in his decision making in the post. Yeah, it's been something we've worked on with him since he was a freshman. Of uh, a lot of times. You know, you don't even have to go double completely to get the post guy to give it up. Exactly. And he does a really nice job of really making them commit to getting down there, and then that opens up our shooters. And it's really, for us, we feel like we got a good mix of if you double down, you're going to leave some guys who can really shoot open, and if not, then you're going to get a big dose of Woodside. Well, you've done a great job because I thought his poise in the post, especially for a sophomore, is pretty good. Uh, you know, I've been blessed to have a few of those guys that can do that. And it, <laughs> it a, makes things a lot easier. Uh, we're smarter coaches. Yeah, Alex, when you yeah, have that you guy. Know, yeah, yeah exactly. but no, he's done a great job. And the whole team, I thought, did a good job tonight. Um, we're speaking with Coach Eversole here from Fairfield Union. If people don't know who he is, they're going to know him because what we've got now is we've got another really good team in Fairfield County. And, and it's, it's long overdue. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Coach Petty's team's. There, I, I, we know what that's going to be, and that's going to yeah. be good every year. But I, I think you've done a tremendous job. Oh, and, and from from what I watched, I thought you did a great job defensively tonight. Um, nothing really was easy for them because what they were trying to do to beat your pressure was get the ball to the rim a lot. Mm -hmm. And I thought your help side was relatively quick and good enough to really shut them down. Yeah, with the first time around, we felt like our help side wasn't there. They got to the rim a lot on us the first time around. We really made a, made a point of emphasis this time that we said, if they're going to beat us, they're going to beat us from the outside. We're not going to give it up straight to the 10. And, I mean, give them credit. I mean, it's easier said than done. <laughs> it sure because, is. Because, I mean, even with us really trying to take that away, they still got there a lot tonight. But, uh, you know, give our guys credit for executing the game plan and getting us to a point to where we can succeed. I thought that was impressive that you had a game plan and it showed that the kids were trying to do what you wanted. And, that, and, that, and that's always fantastic. And, and that shows all the other players in your program that it, it matters what's going on in practice. It matters what, Absolutely. what you prepare. And, uh, you know, I thought Thomas Green really stepped up in the fourth quarter, but he really showed a lot of poise uh, offensively, just took his time, made big shots, stepped to the foul line. You know, we were talking, and, you know, you can have a free throw percentage, but it's always different shooting them in the last yeah, two minutes. Exactly. I mean, there's you've lot, been there. Yeah, absolutely. It's a lot different when you guys step up and there's a The Bloom Carroll Bulldogs. And just saw we're shooting two in a row and then in practice you ten. But uh, you know what? I give a lot of credit to our seniors. When we came here two years ago, uh, they were sophomores on a varsity team that was not in a very good place just emotionally, you know, they right. had a couple rough seasons. And I really give them a lot of credit for sticking it out. It wasn't always easy. It was really tough. But those kids bought in. And you know as well as anyone, when you get kids buying in, you, special things can happen. And, and it is happening. And, and, you know, the thing I told Jared is I, I really feel like you still have an upside. You're not where you need to be. And I don't mean that in a negative no. way. I thought understanding scenarios late in the game, there's a lot of growth to happen there. Yes. But until you've been in them, yeah, it's hard to know. It's kind of like what came first, the chicken or the egg? Exactly. Do you succeed in that position, or do you have to, like, fail in it a few times before you, like – Well, that's the teaching, and you've done a fine job teaching them this year, and, and that's where you can take the film back. And as excited as we all are here tonight, you've got to be ready tomorrow night because oh, that absolutely. is not an easy place to play at all. Absolutely. And, I mean, that's going to be the challenge for us is that, you know, I told the guys in the locker room is that enjoy it tonight because at 9.59 tomorrow we have a shoot around <laughs> at 10. You're going to forget about this, and we got to refocus tomorrow. But, like, I think it's important you take a moment and take in the moment and you enjoy better. it because, you know, these moments don't come very often. Well, I tell you, Alex, I used to have a phrase. I used to tell our guys that um, you earned them. They're not given to you, so you better value it and enjoy it. And uh, congratulations to you. I thought your team was tremendous tonight. Heck of a basketball game, great environment. Oh, yeah. And uh, good luck to you. We're going right. to follow you the rest of the way. Thanks, Coach. See you. Appreciate it. I want to say thanks to Coach Alex Eversall and also to Colin Woodside for joining us uh, on the postgame show. And Shoe, uh, boy, I tell you, what a, what a ball game. That's fun for me, man. <laughs> you know what? I'm not a professional announcer. I do not have my Syracuse communications degree, <laughs> but for me, that's a blast. <laughs>
you know, that's fun for me. We want to say thanks to our crew, our producer-director, Bob Competti. On graphics and audio tonight, Aaron Uhl and Shane Messina. Cameras, Jason Roush and Tom Russo. Uh, we saw a good one tonight, uh, and you saw a good one if you were here or if you're watching it uh, online or uh, on TV tonight. Uh, doesn't get much better than that. That's high school basketball, what it's all about. That's Fairfield Union. Knocks off Bloom Carroll tonight. Your final score, 62 to 56. For all of our crew and for Tim Shoemaker, I'm Jared Stewart. Have yourselves a great night, everybody. Sports presents the Buffalo Wild Wings High School Basketball Game of the Week. Brought to you by Fairfield Medical Center, Ohio University Lancaster, R.N. Smith Heating and Cooling, Standing Stone Bank, Sheridan Funeral Home, Fairfield National Bank, The Huddle Tire Company, Fairfield DD, Personal Touch Party Rentals, The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home, North Body Shop, The Lancaster Eagle Gazette, Ohio Christian University, Kumler Collision, Lines Auto Service, The Carriage Company, Wall to Wall Floors, The Window Man, Kurt Bride Lawn Care, and Infinitely Outdoors.